All right. Hey. Welcome back to another episode of... Oh, all right. Shut up. Zach, it's Thursday, baby. How are we doing? Thursday. I'd like to call it almost Friday, one of my favorite days of the Ooh. week. Uh, excited to be here, Alex, talking to you. Uh, done with March Madness, so, you know, I won some money on it, and it was a good time. But uh, back to our regularly scheduled programming. That's right. That's right. The normalness is back in our podcast, and it's slowly creeping back into our everyday lives. Mm-hmm. Every day, the sun is shining a little brighter. Not every day, consecutively, but over right. a general period of time. Yeah, we we live both in two cloudy places, London and uh, Pittsburgh. So maybe not so much sun, but it's definitely getting warmer. You know, summer's summer's fastly approaching. It sure yeah. is. It and sure what, is, Zach. I know. The I winter. <laughs> Go ahead. But no, it was summer, you know, COVID restrictions are being lifted. People are getting vaccinated. It's uh, the lights at the end of the tunnel. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I feel good about it. Um, it's going to take some adjusting, though, going from uh, sweatpants every day, uh, banging my head against the wall. <laughs> um, I don't know, my other kind of regularly, regularly scheduled quarantine activities uh, to watching TV all night. lifestyle. How, how are you feeling about it? Oh, I'm feeling great. You know, I was in the winter blues there for a little bit. Like the days just would go into nights. It's dark all the time. Um, you know, they say seasonal depression is a thing. That's for sure. Plus on top of COVID restrictions, you can't even go out to, you know, a museum or eat inside or anything safely. So I, it's kind of, great man you know i could get outside now and walk you know outdoor dining's opening up uh, i think i might you know hit that up soon um and it just feels nice because you're not stuck inside the whole time watching the same you know same season of survivor over and over again yeah do you feel like you watched everything that's ever been recorded yeah it definitely extended my you know recording my uh streaming watching you know some things that i might have not watched before you know got into the the watch list because you just you run out of the normal things you're gonna watch you know like you start watching you know obscure movies on instagram or on netflix just to you know make it a little interesting i'm not watching the office at least not for me i wasn't watching the office over and over again that's just too monotonous you know huh. oh man i bet the office made a lot of money during quarantine right people love to rewatch the office that's got to be the most rewatched show there is, I would think. It's got to be up there. But didn't they take it off um, in the winter? Or am I making this up? No, you're right. It's off Netflix. I'm not really sure where you would get it now. I don't know if it's on like NBC's Peacock thing. There's so many streaming services now. It's hard to hard to keep up with. Peacock. I never tried Peacock. No, I haven't either. I, I can't get into all these obscure ones because then you're just going to fall down a rabbit hole. Like there's enough already on like the four or five streaming services that I do have. Like I... I can't add another one. I simply cannot. Have you heard of FUBU? FUBO? Yeah, isn't that kind of like a way to like jerry-rig your TV to get live TV? I think it's sort of like Roku. Yeah. I don't really know anything about it. But people are people are all about FUBO. Maybe it's the name. I think but it's a FUBU. way to watch, from what I understand, to watch live TV. One of my friends has it, and he says like he watches the sports through there and stuff. Um, so which you I pick up the signal from the digital antenna plus streaming services. I don't know if you pick up the, I think it's digital streaming. So kind of like YouTube TV. I have YouTube TV for all like my channels. I don't use like a normal cable box, but YouTube TV is just all online streaming that they have now. Right. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. YouTube TV. I've heard good things. Oh Yeah. Time. Big, big fan of YouTube TV. It does cut out a little bit, and it always seems to be happening like the most, you know, climatic moment. You know, like they're throwing up a final shot, or like you know, he's putting for the last putt in the Masters, and it's just you get that screen. Like, I don't know if there's some guy like hitting a button, maybe, and I, like fuck with you a little bit. But that's probably your internet. Um. <laughs> I've had some technical difficulties recently. Yeah. Fans know. I've been tweeting to them. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude. So imagine it's 
it's Thursday night in May. Guess what? You might not have to watch Netflix uh, for the 10th yeah. night in a row. You might get to go to a baseball game, Zach. Oh, I've oh been waiting. My gosh, can you imagine? I'll tell you what. I've been waiting to drink a cold, icy light on a balmy night at PNC Park with a hot dog in hand for ages now, it feels like. How much would you kill for a Columbus Clippers dime a dog night right now? I would do almost anything to go to a Diamond Dog Night. For the listeners out there who don't know, uh, Columbus Clippers, the I believe they're the Cleveland baseball team's um, AAA team. They have a Diamond Dog Night, literally one dime for a hot dog. I mean, I think there's a limit. That's 10 cents, folks. Yeah. I, I think you can only buy 10 at a time, so you got to pace yourself a little bit. But <laughs> oh, we had some fun times there, but, you know. Uh, how could you beat Diamond Dog? I, I'll tell you what. There, I love – Usually baseball, but I don't, I'm not so interested in the game. I like the event of going yeah. to a baseball. I think it's more fun to just go and you know you hear the crack of the bat, just be around the game. It's fun. You're here for so, the atmosphere, yeah. You get that same, not this exact same atmosphere, but you get a lot of um, the same feelings from minor league. I have to say it's it's pretty fun, and it gives a little more like this intimate feeling when you're there compared to maybe a a major league game yeah the park's a lot smaller you know you're closer to the action uh, and everything is cheaper which is nice too because you know mlb you're paying you know 12 bucks for a beer and a minor league they're like five or six you know more like a bar price so it's it's kind of nice you get a little more drunk you eat a little bit better at a minor league park yeah they're they're not squeezing you as hard in minor leagues they're just happy you're there yeah they just want you in the seat you know (laughs) <laughs> yeah for sure man for sure wow i gotta check out some minor league baseball here in london and wonder what the scene is like yeah maybe a soccer game that might be fun to go yeah. to I'm sure those are yeah maybe big. dude maybe um yeah so let's get into it man like this summer there's gonna be some do's there's gonna be some don'ts yeah um what's one thing that you are would advise people Coming from lockdown, coming from winter blues, coming from quarantine, lockdown, isolation island, getting to real life in the summer. What's one thing you would tell them? Stop. Don't do it. Don't do it. I, the first thing we got to stop is Zoom happy hours. One of the my most hated things that has happened during Corona has to be Zoom happy hours. They are so awkward. You, you don't know when anyone's talking. The mics are muted. You're like, you have to be like hitting your space bar. Like, yeah, and Mike, you're muted over there. You know? Uh, uh, and you don't know what to talk about. You have like a beer by yourself in your room. It's almost worse than just drinking, you know, by yourself or with one of your close friends. Then, uh, no, it's just not a fan. I'm not a fan at all. And I can't wait for those to be over. Yeah. Through that, man. Those are, those can be really boring. What's sure. so, so what's your number one? Uh, don't things that need to stop after, you know, we get these vaccines rolled out a little bit more normalcy. One thing needs to stop. The two weeks of unwashed sweatpants need to stop. <laughs> Put those away. You know, go to some shorts at least that are freshly washed. You got to yeah. feel good about what's going on. You know, that pizza stained gray sweatpants. Put it away. Yeah. And it doesn't need to come out back out for a while. Yeah. You're going to feel a lot better, you know, if you put on some real clothes and get out there, you know, even if it doesn't have to be too fancy, but anything but sweatpants, man. It's like, especially when it's hot in the summer, you don't want, you don't want to be wearing that. This is sweats. Yeah. Come on. When's the last time I wore some jeans today? I felt good, you know? Yeah. You feel like like you're real, you're real human when you wear jeans, right? Like I started wearing jeans just around like, you know, the house to work in and it just felt nice, you know? You feel like a bum in sweatpants. At least I feel like a bum when I'm in sweatpants. I feel like I'm not getting anything done, you know? Yeah, it should be like post, I don't know, 8 p.m. sweatpants or something. Yeah, like you're hanging on the couch watching a movie. That's that's appropriate, you know, sweatpants, you know. They do have these fancier sweatpants now, you know, like the joggers, which mm-hmm. I guess that's a little more, you know, better. But those classic cotton sweatpants, me personally, I, I, I like to only lounge in those, you know. You got to get rid of them. Ditch them, ditch them. Winter's over. Summer's coming. Ditch the unwashed sweatpants. I know you only wash them twice, quarantine, because no one I, cares. I think you're just talking about yourself. There. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. What's your number one do after we get back to uh, a little bit of normal Number one do. Number one do, I would say, don't be 
one, number one do, excuse me, number one do, reconnect. I know there's someone you lost contact with them because you couldn't see them a little far away. Maybe you did a few Zoom calls, but you missed out. Reconnect. I'm sure they feel the same way you do. No hard feelings because you didn't talk for, fuck, I don't know, eight months or whatever, however long this shit is. Reconnect because yeah. your social circle is going to um, kind of go back to this wider net. Um, which is a good thing. And yeah, I think the, uh, these relationships are valuable. So reconnect. Yeah. What about I you, like, man? I like, I like that, Alex. And to say one point on that, um, I don't think you should ever beat yourself up for what happened, you know, during this pandemic, like you gain a little bit of weight or you lost connection with somebody. It's, you know, we were in a global pandemic. It's going to happen. Um, we were locked down very, you know, big restrictions. You're going to lose contact with some of those farther out people, but that doesn't mean you can't, you know, start where you left off, get back out there, you know, go have a beer at happy hour with them and enjoy life. But, you know, I think it's going to make us enjoy those little things more. You know, I just enjoy going for a walk now. Like I take, I used to take that for granted, but just walking outside now, you know, it's like the best thing that I could ever do. So, um, yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. My number one is pretty related. I'm looking forward to having an outside barbecue, you know, with some of my friends and family. Just got a nice new grill. You know, it makes me sound a little bit like a suburban dad, but I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than some some grilled meats and veggies, man. And, you know, just enjoying some drinks on the patio with your friends and laughing. Got some yard games going. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun time. Nice man. Grill Meister. Yeah. Jack Troy. What you cooking up? You got some planned or is this a hypothetical barbecue? It, hypothetical, but I do have um I've been perfecting my turkey burgers for the past couple of years now, so Probably some turkey birds, maybe some grilled chicken, you know, if we're feeling a little bit of wild, maybe some, some shrimp skewers, you know. Whoa, whoa, this guy, watch out. Lawrenceville's got a new barbecue king. Love it, man. <laughs> yeah. What about, uh? so on the topic of the yard game, Sox, I want to get your, um, your thoughts on your favorite yard game. Yard you know, game? You like the classic. Number one yard game. Cornhole, Come on. you know. Come on, got to go cornhole, man. Cornhole classic. Anyone can play. Anyone can play. It's got the tailgate vibes. Mom can play. Your girlfriend can play. You can play. It's easy. Yeah. It's easy Cornhole to pick up. You just out. throw it. It's simple. You throw the beanbag in the hole, you know? What? I mean, so, have you ever. Pong. Anyone can play Pong as well. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but there's kind of a, you know, it's like a, it's a college thing. Yeah. I would say cornhole is a little like uh, classier, for lack of a better term. You know, if you think about it, it's pretty much the same thing. I, it's the same ob objects, right? You know, they're throwing yeah. something into a hole. A lot of games really are kind of like that. A lot of yard games. Uh, but um, have you ever watched like, the corn, the pro cornholers on ESPN? Uh, yeah, we're missing uh, the big championship game tonight. <laughs> They, I, it's crazy, man. They're like they, they hit the shot every single time. It's like a robot. I, how much do you know about professional cornhole? Not that much. I've watched it maybe like ten minutes of it my whole life. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Why do you? Do you I, have I have a lot questions? of questions about how professional cornhole works, but we don't have to get into. Them. We can probably just, you know, spitball ideas here. <laughs> so I was watching professional cornhole one time, but it's like, I don't know if it was, it was like a college tournament of cornhole, so not professional, mm -hmm. but there were people that were like, here's Sandy representing uh, Alabama with his mother, uh, Lorraine. Mm -hmm. And Lorraine was like, bang, bullseye. And Sandy's like, bang, bullseye. It was like a mother father thing. It was on ESPN now. So, it's, anyway, like, someone from ESPN, hit, let me know. Does ESPN not have like better things to cover? Can they not put on like European football? Like, why do why is cornhole on ESPN? I wouldn't consider it a sport. Look, look, um, I speak for everyone at AFI. If you want the rights to Spanish football, you're gonna have to pay <laughs> the big bucks, huh? at least 200, 300 bucks. <laughs> 
Oh man, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Who knows, man? Maybe one day, one day. Yeah, we're working on it. It's building. On the topic of yard games, not to get off this, I'm very intrigued because oh, I've been shopping like for, for a lot. Have you ever played ladder ball? I just, I just purchased ladder ball. Was been practicing in my backyard. Oh, tell me about it. Okay, so it's like you got, it's like this PVC piping, right? And there's three rings you can hit it on. And you got like two golf balls with a string through them tied at each end. And then you're trying to sling them on to the well, different level poles and they're worth different points. It's it's actually really fun. So it's kind of like, a, you know, a new age cornhole, if you will. Ooh, I like that. That's yeah. fun. What about that uh, spike ball game? Yes. A little more athletic. Very dynamic. Fun. I saw someone, I was walking through the park yesterday. Um, and I saw people playing it on the baseball field. It looked like a blast. So it, from what I understand, it's, like, it's four people, two people on a team. And it's kind of like volleyball, but you have to hit it on like a little trampoline. So you can only hit it once or you have to hit it up in the air to like your teammate to be able to hit it on the trampoline. I think you might get three hits each per team. And then you're like diving around. There's professional spike ball too you can watch. That is actually entertaining. Let's do a live reaction. Professional spike ball. Type it in. Okay. Have you seen this meme of um, Brandon Marshall like screaming? No, is it, is it new? Yeah, it's all over the place. There was a uh, I saw something today. A former NFL player had like shot and killed like six people in their home. I saw that. It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Okay, top ten plays of twenty seventeen. Perfect start. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 you can get pretty close and slam it down, huh? Yeah, you can get right up next to it. Oh, that was tough. These guys are good. They're real Dude, good. Should we become pro spike ball players? I've thought about it. I think we should go pro in some kind of obscure sport. That's kind of, I think, like, you know how you set like these high goals for yourself when you're a kid? Like, hey, I want to be an NFL player. I've just, I've brought it down in my time. You know, like, I just want to be, like, an obscure pro sportsman. I think it's too late for us. But we could train, like, our sons. Oh, I don't pros. think it, I don't think it's too late. I think you're, I think you're, you're, you're having delusions of grandeur. Like, how could it be too late? We just have to buy the spike ball and practice it. Like, it's not like it's that athletic of a sport. Zach, you were just talking about that you perfected your turkey burger. You're getting old, man. Yeah, you can't because make I it throw spike ball. It's a young man's game. Because I haven't been playing spike ball. That's the problem. <laughs> I should be practicing spike ball in my yard, not cooking turkey burgers. Yeah, you should. Okay. I mean, if we get on a regimen 12 to 18 hours a day. That's what I'm saying. We can make the 2025 20, Olympics. We really got to hit it hard. I don't think it's in the Olympics. It's like cur curling, man. These curlers, they're like suburban dads who just happen to be good at curling have you seen I, the usa curling team i'm imagining it's a bunch of guys that go to like the curling rink or whatever they just pound beers and hang out and play poker and that's, curl. A, that's exactly what they look like if you want to stare at everyone it's a bunch of like white dudes a little bit overweight with beards like it looks like you're going to see them at the brewery drinking an ipa yeah for real hey how was um, the brewery last night man you have a good idea give me a little yeah, right man. So this is a nice brewery called Strange Roots. Shout out to uh, Millvale. It's a uh, shout out. I got a nice garden there. You know, it's all outdoors, social distance, very nice. Um, but I, I looked at their menu because we talked about this, and I think they had, if I'm calling, seven beers available, and I think four of them were IPA or a double IPA, and one was a pale ale. So they basically had like two other options that weren't of the pale ale IPA. Status. Man, I'm jealous. I want to sit outside on a sunny day and drink a nice beer. Oh, it was great, man. It was like it was a little bit warm out. It was probably like 70 degrees, you know. They had some nice string lights. Oh. I got started out with a pale ale, beautiful. And then us, you know what the great thing is about IPAs? Very heavy alcohol content. Like I had a double IPA, it was like eight percent, you know. Boom. You don't have to be face, putting huh? back like thirteen beers to get a, you know. You, a couple of beers and you got a nice beer buzz and you're good to go. 
I ha- I've never had a problem uh, having to drink a lot to get drunk, so I, I think I'm good there. <laughs> You're a low, low uh, tolerance, huh? Yeah, man. And I really haven't been drinking much at all in uh, quarantine, so I'm sure that first like summer beer, oh, it's going to be great. Dude, you're going to be ripe for the pubs. You and Boris are going to be going out to the pubs together, getting a nice pint. Oh, Joe, my man. <laughs> Love your hair. He seems like a real guy's guy, yeah? Yeah. He's a guy. What what is the capital of uh, Britain? Is it London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, have you seen like his like prime minister house or whatever? Yeah, he has a house. Um, I I've, I've walked past it. Like, uh, yeah, it's in central, like near um, Parliament and stuff. I don't nice know the house. name of it. Yeah, it's nice. It's like all these old buildings there. Super nice, yeah. you know, like Victorian like style. Store stone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good, man. I mean, Central London is great. I was actually, uh, I haven't been in there much, but uh, I went, um, oh, shoot, what is it? I think last weekend I went. It was really fun. Like the weather was nice. Went there, took some pics, like of Central again. I felt like a tourist. And then today I was in Central again. I was like, Oh man, this is so cool! Like, I totally yeah. forgot. Like, I'm moving here. Um, yeah, so it's fun, for sure. That's awesome. That's, yeah, I feel like that'll be another do for you once uh, everything's back to normal. A lot more traveling throughout Europe once that opens up. Bro, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, definitely got to like explore London. I feel like I don't know it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I just know like a few spots, but uh, because of quarantine, I just wasn't like motivated. Like. If you can't go and have lunch in a neighborhood, like, or even sit in the coffee shop, it just makes me not want to go there, you know? Right, because um, there's not much to do. Yeah, I mean, essentially the option was like, hey, come to this neighborhood you haven't been to. You can get takeout and sit on the bus bench and eat it. Yeah, that's well, not that appealing. Like, no, it's not. It's easy to stay here and yeah. <laughs> not do that um so yeah man i'll explore london a bit we'll see what's up like um with other activities and stuff so um maybe there's some football maybe not who knows we'll find out um but it'll be a good time man i'm excited for yeah you kind of discover this city a little more that's awesome how's the how's the vaccine rollout going there are you on a list soon like how's it working i'm not on a list or anything but the website says like i typed in my my um, numbers and everything, demographics, whatever the word is. And they said May, I should be ready. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's getting out decently well here in London, at least. So, um, yeah, I mean, our cases are way down because we've been in lockdown. But actually, on Monday, a lot of things open, like the gym opens Monday, coffee shops open, like at a certain capacity. So Monday is a huge day in London, and I'm psyched for it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's going to be exciting. Get back to the gym, get some coffee, you know, go grab some fish and chips. Yeah, all in one go. <laughs> that's Benching. one day right there. Benching, pounding coffee, squatting. There's like a, a fish and chips shelf. You squat. That sounds, like a, recipe. That sounds like a recipe to shart yourself. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's gonna be sick, dude. I'm I'm very excited for Monday. That's good, man. That's awesome. Sounds like things are looking up. Oh yeah, baby. What about uh, uh pirates, man? They're gonna have uh, people in the stands, butts in the seats. What's yeah, today was the home opener, man. We had uh, I believe it was twenty five percent capacity, which ends up being like seven, eight grand people somewhere around that. So nice. the ticket prices are high, man, because obviously people haven't been to a game in forever. So and. There's less tickets. This is the highest I've ever seen ticket prices for the Pirates, man. It's like 50 bucks for the nosebleeds. Usually you can get down a first base line for like 15, you know. 50 bucks for nosebleeds. Wow. I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty cool, man. I would even be tempted to pay that yeah. like, I th- if it was I- nice weather. Right. I think I'm going to wait it out a little bit. Like I'm, I'm thinking June, more things will open up. Capacity will get bigger. The Pirates will tank as usual. I'll be right back to the old prices. What do you think of the MLB moving its all-star game from Georgia because of the new restrictive voting laws to Colorado? 
I thought that was a great move by the MLB. I, I was very surprised, honestly. Like the MLB to me seems like a one of the more conservative uh, sports leagues. So I thought that sent a big message to Georgia. Um, and you know, there's a lot of been companies like locked out of it, and Georgia's losing a lot, a ton of money just from that game, from what I understand. So um, I'm glad they did that. It's a it sends a message to the lawmakers. Yeah, Coca-Cola did something. I don't know the details, uh, how if it's symbolic or actually financially uh, um, impactful. But, um, yeah, some good good stuff there uh, from response-wise. Pretty cool to see that, I have to say. Yeah, because I had the same idea of the MLB as this kind of boomer league. Most mm-hmm. of their fans are old white guys. But mm-hmm. if you look at the league, I mean, the, it's got to be – I mean, I don't, I'm making this up from my limited knowledge, but it's got to be two thirds, uh, like Latin American players, or at least forty percent, or something. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big the, chunk. Like, definitely a big chunk of um, their players. It's like you wouldn't think um, it would be, but if you look at the stats, I think you're right. It's probably somewhere around forty percent uh, of their players. So it's like it's kind of like they have to stand up for their players in that sense. Like they can't be sitting alongside anymore. You know, it's not Babe Ruth MLB anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. It's been a lot more progression and it's a good thing. I think athletes should have a voice and it's nice to see like an actual conglomerate league stand behind them, especially even in the NFL standing behind them. It looks like what happened to Colin Kaepernick and they still behind them. NCAA has stepped up this year too with uh, certain initiatives. So, I mean, I think that's where you get, unfortunately have change has to be made within like the corporations and bigger entities. It's, and that's just yeah. how America is run. Think about like if um, these big corporations hadn't backed uh, black lives matter, would, would anything like, like we saw in the fall, um, like um, symbolic wise, like sports wise, the NBA did like, a big campaign on NFL, NCAA. Um, I, I, I'm sure if the corporations hadn't backed that, we wouldn't have seen that response. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully they could, like, it's not just, you know, a hot air balloon for a lack of a better term. Hopefully they back it up with some, you know, funding for, you know, places, things like Black Lives Matter. So, um Yet to be seen. I mean, there's the big case going on with Derek Chavez, too, and we'll see what's what's playing out with that. But what I've heard is pretty emotional testimony. It's you know a lot of cops are even coming out and saying um, what he did was wrong, and he used excessive use of force, which we don't usually see. There's usually this blue wall of um, you know kind of silence. So, I mean, step by step, it's hopefully you know I, I want to be hopeful that it's making some kind of change. I I agree, and I think. Um... Yeah, I've seen some clips on Twitter. It looks pretty pretty intense. But what what's sad is like think about this became viral because it was on video. Like I'm mm-hmm. sure there's stuff that happens that's just as bad or worse that's not on video. Right. Um, but I mean, like that's... um Yeah. Yeah, I mean the video is definitely <laughs> definitely uh kind of hurts you know, it, it makes it more impactful. And that's just kind of the age we live in. People need to see something to kind oh, of get behind it. We're losing there. We're losing there. Internet's going down. Did you switch? No. I think I'm fine now. Are you fine? Yeah, it's okay. Lost it for a minute. It's okay. Good. We bounced back. Um, all right. Let's wrap it up on a good note. Zach, what's one other thing other than barbecue, other than baseball, other than beer, you big American guy, beer, <laughs> baseball, barbecue? What else are you looking for this looking forward to this summer? Well, I'm 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 hoping that there's gonna be some um races that I can run in. i I was tried to sign up for a half marathon last year. Um it got canceled. I just signed up for the full marathon this year, got canceled again. But I'm hoping maybe later in the summer there might be some like ten K 10 mile I could run in and do a real race. Um, cause I miss getting out there and doing a real race. It's pretty cool atmosphere and, um, it's fun to train for. How about you? Have a goal. Yeah, man. What am I looking forward to? Um, 
yeah, hopefully travel a little bit. I hope I can go to Germany this summer, um, see my family. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, man, just traveling a little bit. Like, uh, I'm in London, so you know Europe is is close by. So hopefully I can uh, see somewhere new. Maybe maybe Spain. I don't know. We'll see. TBD. Yeah, I'm sure all of us have the travel bug after this pandemic. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah man. Let's meet up. <laughs> all right. <laughs> We'll do a, an actual live uh, All Right Shut Up podcast special episode. We won't have internet yeah. issues to be perfect. From Rome. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Live from Rome. We'll hold you to that. Live from Rome. We'll cover we'll, – we can live call an Italian football game, Lazio Ducks, bro. Wow. I would like nothing more. I'm sure our listeners would be entranced. Dude, look out for Lazio Ducks, Luke Casey, Matt Hazel – Dynamic duo coached by Dan Pippen. Watch out, Farmer Panthers, this Sunday. Tune in. Wow. Well, we're going to end it on that. So you you tune into the AFI. I'm sure Chow gives a great recap. Yeah. Game of the day for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shut All up. Right. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of All Right, Shut Up. Make sure to go ahead and leave us a review. Help us grow the podcast. All right, shut up. Catch us next week on all your favorite podcast sites. 